Hello, and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. I am Lemur, and today we are going to be talking about space engineers. I have been playing space engineers for, I would say, three or four years now. Uh, however, they've released a lot of new footage and stuff since I've done my last review. So this video is going to be an updated review for everyone to check out for space engineers. If you have any interest in the game uh, or looking to buy it, make sure you check the description down below. I've got a link down there for you and everything like that. Uh, but uh, overall, I just wanted to give everyone a uh, idea of what the game is like and so what we're going to take is we're going to take a journey through the game first i'm going to take you into the game and show you some of the intricacies of the game talking about the ui talking about uh what it is uh, and all that stuff um, of course that's after the overview of the game and what it is uh the next part is i will go into the pros and cons and then i will give my final uh, opinions and overall rating of the game so Space Engineers is a sandbox survival game. However, they have introduced a lot of new things from my old review. And if you want to check out what they've changed since my review, I will leave my old review down below if you want to check that out just to see and compare what the differences in the game are since I've played back then and playing now. Um, but with that being said, it's an open world survival game that allows you to create space items uh, and under using gravity and using different types of thrusters and fun things like that in order to explore space and fight uh, pirates. And uh, it also has campaign missions and tutorial missions. And it's really campaign missions. I say campaign missions, campaign worlds uh, and tutorial worlds where it gives you the opportunity to uh, really understand the game before you really jump into it too too deep uh, the tutorial i've actually run it since uh after i've already played the game for like 200 hours and then i went back into it uh, and did the tutorial world uh and that's some of the footage you're going to actually be seeing in this video uh, even right now uh is it's extremely helpful it really gives you an idea of of the things you can do in the game and understanding them um and really breaking them down in a in the simplistic way as possible. Um, it, it's not like a, a cookie cutter. So there are a lot of videos out there on the tutorial uh, and explaining the game. And you're going to get a quick brief idea through when I go through the UI of what you're going to expect in the game. Uh, but overall, the game is fantastic. It's a, uh, You can make dedicated servers. You can play with people. Uh, you can have combat. That was one of the negatives before was the combat scenarios where it wasn't working as well as it was supposed to. Uh, but overall, uh, it is uh, a very interesting game and let's go ahead and jump into the UI now. So part of this review, I wanted to give everyone a idea of what the game is like inside of it playing the actual game on here. Uh, so we're on one of my custom worlds that I have. Uh, that is the space world. It's just an open world survival game. Uh, and I just want to kind of show you some of the basics in here. Now, this is a big bright yellow ship. Um, we did that kind of more of as a joke than anything. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the overall interface here. Now, you can see over on your left is your basic bars, your oxygen, your hydrogen. Your hydrogen is your, your backpack, your energy, which is like using your tools or actually just standing in an oxygen uh, space. Uh, you've got your JX. O and L. L is your light that allows you to see. You've got X, which is your gravity boots or your backpack. O is your little beacon to let everyone know where you are. And J closes your mask. Uh, I am in space, but I have air vents. These air vents allow us to breathe inside of our ship as long as it's air pressurized. Um, and then above me, you can see what uh, appears to be rather confusing a uh, conveyor system with all of our stuff attached uh, i say appears because basically what you have is you have your conveyor system which is these tubes that you see here that are running here it says conveyor on some of these these are conveyor junctions um, that allow you to move minerals uh, ores and items that you've crafted or even uh, oxygen and hydrogen uh, to different devices that give you access to uh, creating maybe switching or ore to us uh, uh, to bars uh, so something like if you jump in here this is the generator for oxygen and hydrogen um, that would run then into your hydrogen tank or oxygen tank based on what it's doing uh, then you have cargo containers these hold items and if i wanted to move these items in and out that's what the point of those uh Conveyor tubes do, uh, and then you have your refinery, which turns your ore that you collect into bars, and then you take those bars and you put them in the assembler, 
in order to assemble parts so you can craft items. Um, so uh, that's the basic idea of what you're doing and then obviously moving weapons and things of that nature, but your conveyor system is the lifeblood blood of your ship. Uh, I have done a video on conveyor systems. I will leave that down in the description down below so you can check out that video on conveyor systems if you are looking for a little bit more of an understanding about the conveyor systems. But uh, We've talked about the interface on the left. I've talked about how the conveyor system may look confusing. And then there's the toolbar at the bottom where you can see I can place all different items. Uh, if I hit G, uh, it gives me access to all the different items that are in here uh, and the progression tree that exists. Um, now, there are expansion packs that I do not have yet. Uh, the DLCs, um, basically, you can buy those uh, and you get access to uh, different looks and different things that are existent on... Uh, space engineers that they've added since the original game came out um, because it has come out for so lo some long ago. Um, obviously, the DLC is more of a way to continue financing the game that is coming through. Uh, so uh, with all that being said, you can go into these blocks. You can search through them by one by one. You can see there's a lot of ways uh, in here. And you literally just, if you decide to do something, so let's say I want to put um, this ore detector, which allows me to see ore in asteroids uh, in my bar. I just drop it down there. Uh, and then I can pull it up in my inventory. You can see it changes to the size of the ship. Uh, and then you just hit the number and it places it down as long as you have the base component. Uh, by base component, I mean like this on the right side here. You can see we want to place a window that's a one by two. One by two meaning it's one, high, one wide, two uh, wide. Uh, and on top of that, you can see it requires girders, bulletproof glass on the right, uh, and your girders are what you need to place it. I have no girders on me, so you can see when I click to place it, it says you need a girder just to place it. Uh, and then it places down a skeleton, um, which I will actually show everyone really quick, just so you can see what it looks like when it's doing things on here. Uh, so we will find a girder. I can just search it simply, see if it's in here. There's a couple girders. And then some of those. So basically what you do is you place it down and you can see it puts up a nice frame. You bring your welder over to it and you just weld it and it starts to change on there. Uh, I'm not going to fully create this uh, because there's no need to because that's where it is. Oops. And then you can see it finishes on there when you do that. So we've made a large ship. Uh, I am using my gravity boots to walk. That's why you're getting that tilt on there. You've got doors that allow you to open and close and pressurize certain areas. And then we have our cockpit up here in the front, which we have created a nice little color change here to get out of the yellow. And then this is all for pressurization uh, on here is why we have so many doors. And then you can see the main cockpit. Um, we have two here. We've got a bunch of seats because there's five of us at play. We've got a, a, a co-pilot seat, the pilot seat. One controls the ship, the other one doesn't. Um, you can see we can create GPS markers and out here in space, you can see all kinds of fun stuff. Um, they also do include scripts. Now, they didn't have this the first time around where you can make your LCD panels look like certain things. So you can put your logo of your um, faction on there. You can put the time, the actual time, what the weather is, how fast you're moving, how much uh, electricity or hydrogen you have stored up and ready to go, uh, your uh, station to gravity, so basically what your gravity looks like. Uh, on here. So out here you can look for uh, asteroids and space. Um, we're going to jump in the ship and I'm going to hit V. V puts you in third person and Alt allows you to look around. So we came from Earth. Uh, we actually just got out here on this map and you can see our ship right here uh, still has uh, atmospheric thrusters on it and it has hydrogen thrusters because we have not found platinum. Uh, so finding platinum is the way you get to ion thrusters, which allow for space travel, but hydrogen is the universal because ion does not work well in gravity. So there are planets with gravity on here uh, that allow that system. And you just go find your asteroids. You go mine them with miners. So you can see we have a small uh, miner that we brought up with us somewhere. Where, where's our miner? Up oh, there it is. Totally lost it. So we brought that tiny little miner. You can see it on the bottom of the ship here. Um, that is our miner that we have with us. Um, it's literally that little bug down there. Actually, I'll jump outside just to show you guys. Oops, don't want to move the ship there. Uh, we'll show you the miner, but basically you can use that to go around and, and simplify your uh, grabbing of resources. Always you have to do it all yourself and then manage it and carry it, and it allows for larger carrying of items. Now, it was an atmospheric one, so you can see it's got all the atmospheric thrusters on it that allow it for it to fly up and down, but you can see it is turned off. It's got batteries, uh, and it can fly around. So it does need some 
adjustments. I need some ion thrusters on it or hydrogen thrusters. We will be doing ion thrusters on this uh, to allow it to uh, go ahead and uh, be okay. Ooh, I missed actually a little box there. Uh, didn't know that. Uh, but uh, basically what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create this thing uh, and get it out and running so that we can go mine um, the asteroids out here. But you can see because I have my hydrogen up and running, we can check everything out and you can see how we work uh, through everything. We've got solar panels to get energy. So we did this where uh, it's got solar panels. So we just point at the sun and you get maximum solar panel power. Uh, on there but that is really kind of the essence of the game is this. that's the crafting menu the ui uh, you can create whatever you want this is built block by block as you can see every little square so i'll just go and grind up this square you can see is your crafting and you place it how you want you have different things uh, that you can craft you can make it round you can make it square you can make it triangles you can really have a lot of fun with the crafting and what it looks like and use things in different ways uh, to allow you to change the way this thing looks uh, and really give your ships and and buildings the what what you want them to appear uh, you can even go into the workshops here on here uh, and pull them open uh, which i can't do on this one i can actually uh, if i hit uh, shift k it allows me to go into blue nope 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 shift b control b yeah, control B allows me to go to the workshop if I were uh, in mod IO um, and I can grab a workshop item in here to allow me to uh, download items that people have already built. It gives you a blueprint. You put it down and you can just start crafting it right there uh, and downloading it. So uh, it, it allows for so much customization. Uh, it's a really nice uh, opportunity for you to check out and do what you want to do here and, and craft the items that you want to craft. Uh, it's it's a really enjoyable and in-depth experience. There's so much to do. Uh, if you know C++, you can script more things into those LCD panels. Uh, and I do not know that but you can download some of those online uh, you can make all the doors and all the things that you want in the world it is completely up to you what you build how you build it and and what you do uh, so uh, so that's overall the ui that we have looked at the ui the building uh, showing you some of the basics of the game i didn't want to get too in depth on, on the review but give you an idea of what you can do what you can make out of it and really produce uh, on the game uh, let's go ahead and jump into the pros and cons of the game now if we wanted to check that out while we roll some random footage of me doing all kinds of different things. So before we jump into the pros and cons, I really do want to hit what's changed from the last review that I did. One of them uh, is the changes that are major to what it does. They've introduced some new items in here. They've changed a couple of the basic understandings of the game um, and the spawn ships that you do have. With that being said, though, uh, they did introduce a tutorial world, which is awesome. Uh, I've played through almost the entire thing at this point. I just haven't killed the last part, so I'm trying to get the achievement where you attack it from space. But... Um, They've got campaign missions now. Uh, PvP is much better than it used to be. Uh, before, when you would blow up a ship, it would lag out your server and shut everything down. Now you can blow up ships and it really doesn't have that much of an issue. I mean, it still has an impact if the ship is ginormous and it's breaking apart. But um, overall, it is definitely way better than it was when it comes to controlling those objects. Uh, and the uh, starter ships are, as I said, are already completely different. So with all those changes, let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons of the game. So for the pros, I've got, uh, there's a ton to do. There are conveyor systems, there are different items, there are stuff to grab and get and ships to build and you can do whatever you want. You can make projectors, you can make kinetic missiles, nuclear missiles. I mean, you can have a blast with this doing whatever you want. Your imagination is literally the end of the world, or not the end of the world, but is, is, is the limits of this game. It gives you the ability to do what you want uh, and as long as you can find the resources to do it, you can you can craft it. So uh, you can make a whole empire. Uh, you can make a giant spaceship that you're going to fly around like a giant Death Star or something like that. It is completely up to you what you do and how you do it just as long as you're willing to spend the time doing it. Uh, that is one thing I will say is it is definitely time consuming. Uh, you can't really max out the settings the way 
unless you go and get a mod max out the settings like a lot of other games that allow you to do that where uh i use arc as an example of a game i play where you can just literally grab a slider slow it all the way up uh, and have instant tames and all that kind of stuff uh this does not work that way uh you really have to get in there and uh, work on the mods and things of that nature uh, you have the freedom to build whatever you want as i said your imagination is really your limit if you aren't feeling like you have the best creative mind in the world there are blueprints you can get off the workshop uh for different ships and things that you can download look at examine i actually don't hate that um, I, I think it's really nice to have access i say don't hate that uh, as it's a bad thing it's really nice it gives you ideas sometimes just seeing someone else building something or what they've built and how they built it can help give you ideas how you want to change something or produce something uh, looking at someone else's intricacies and, and tricks that they might use within their buildings is really kind of a, a fun way to really expand upon things um, there is C++ coding in here. Um, this is also a con just as a heads up for everyone. Uh, but there is C++ coding in here where you can make it almost do anything you want. Uh, I mean, you can make it where it makes uh, loads up a, a drone ship coming in, uh, gives it a nuclear missile, then launches the nuclear missile at one location that you've decided. Uh, and it literally can do whatever the heck you want it to do. Uh, but as I said, it, it does require you knowing some serious C++ in there. Uh, I do not. And if you don't, you can look up some scripts but it's not like it's um uh, an easy interface but if you know how to do it obviously it helps you out a ton uh to be able to create those items uh, next is you build everything part by part so just like uh other survival games minecraft um I don't say arc because arc is wall by wall, uh, but Minecraft's block by block. Um, and and you can create whatever you want out of it. And this is the same thing for this one. If you want to make a big giant dragon that flies around, you can make a big giant dragon that flies around. Uh, the, the choices are limited, unlimited to what you want them to be. Uh, but that's also negative. It is uh, brick by brick. So if, if you like making boxes, you can make a box and fly a box around. But that can some people think it's, well, you're asking me for a lot. And I think that's where the workshop app opportunities come in to really help develop uh, those chances for you to look at different creative ships and different designs within there. Uh, and the next is some people, I think it's awesome. Some people might see as a turn off, there are some science ideas behind it. So taking ice and converting it to your oxygen and your hydrogen, or uh, for example, having gravity or planetary or atmospheric gravity or gravity sensors or running conveyor systems with sorters. And there's a lot of... Um, intricacies that you can really get deep into now let me be clear you do not need any type of this stuff to really play the game at an enjoyable level uh it just expands upon it if you're willing to dive into those little nuances of grabbing the right things and doing the right things and modifying gravity you know where uh, for example if you're down at the right against the ground we talk about this where you're right next to the ground the gravity is going to be heavier than as you're leaving the atmosphere so you don't nearly need as much thrust and you can kind of manipulate your thrust at the higher atmosphere gravity or planetary gravity is really what it's called um versus down on the ground i mean on the ground you're gonna have to give everything you got getting out there but as soon as you get to you know that 0.25 gravity or something like that you can kind of start letting off a little bit because you're not going to be slowing down nearly as fast as you once were and conserve your fuel now if I've helped hinted at a bunch of these with the cons of this. Um, and as I said, uh, the time is one of the cons that I do see. It. It's a little bit grindy until you get the basics up. But even then, it's still when you decide you want to build a big ship, you got to get a lot of resources. Uh, you can do all of this solo. It is totally acceptable for you to run it by yourself. Uh, having more people means you can have more ships out there, more miners, more things but you're also going to spend just as many resources but you can divide and conquer hey you go pile up on a ton of iron and i'll go get a ton of nickel and he goes gets a ton of uranium and everyone can go crazy building that as you're unloading all of this fuel as long as you make a big giant base um and working together does i feel like exponentially increase the speed of it everyone can have their own creative freedoms but you're working together in one location as long as everyone keeps up uh keeping resources up but as again that's kind of the common problem in every survival game is keeping up the resources and not destroying them uh it is a server hog though as i said there are still limits 
updates within the game. It does beat up a server if you are planning on hosting a dedicated server. Uh, I've thought about putting up a dedicated server for everyone. I may still do it. Uh, I do have to upgrade my server just as a perfect example for it to get running uh, because we have all the arc maps on there. So I will probably have to put a second CPU in and more RAM just to get this thing up and running because it is a server hog. Uh, on your computer, though, it runs fine. Even when I've run five, five or six people, I don't cap out. I don't run into issues with running OBS at the same time. Uh, the only time I run into issues is when I'm running a dedicated server with all of the open objects and stuff like that. Uh, the next is building by part by part. We talked about this. This can be limited by your creativity, uh, but there is the workshop to counter this. So I'm including on the cons, but I can see it being more pro than a con on here. Um, and then, of course, the science stuff, as we, we alluded to, it can be intimidating to some people to see all of that. But overall, once you're in it and you start using the user interface and you start figuring it out, it's actually a really simple game. Um, and it's easy to overcome those, those difficulties. So with all of that being said, what are my opinions of the game? Well, uh, I think it's kind of been told, uh, I've hinted at many times before, I have over 260 hours at least. I think we're at my, like three or 400 hours now on this game. Uh, it's a fantastic game. I really do enjoy it. Um, I don't enjoy it like as a everyday nonstop. I can see how it would be if you have the right group with you, uh, fighting each other, having fun with those kind of things. Um, but for me as a individual person, um, it can get a little bit taxing. So having it as a, a change of pace from like an arc or a Minecraft or something of that nature, it's very nice to have something like this just to give you a little bit of a different look and a different feel. Um, but as I said, if you get the right group together, it can be a fantastic game. And I think there are a lot of people that will really, really enjoy it. It gives you that space survival feel that you really wanted out there. Um, I'm going to give it four out of five lemurs, though. Uh, it is a great game. Uh, I highly recommend it. Um, I'm leaving one lemur off really more just because it's still an early release. Uh, and, and I don't want to give a five out of five unless it's a game that I've spent thousands of hours on. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't even give Ark, even though I've spent thousands of hours on it, a five out of five. There are still so many things that they, I know they're limited, but they can't do it. But we're getting back into that. Um, I just really recommend the game. I think it's a great game. I think it's worth every dollar that you're going to spend on it, which again, if you want it down in the description, there's a link down there for you. Uh, but, um, it's it's a great game and I highly recommend it. Um, you're seeing all the things you can do. You're seeing some of the survival stuff and some of the fun things that we've done as a group uh, over the last couple of days on the newest patch on it. So uh, I, if you, you're thinking about it, you think there's a chance, I would recommend getting it. It's totally a, a worth buy and you'll spend more than enough time on it to be happy with it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have anything to add, if you did purchase it and you felt like I was wrong in my review or anything of that nature, please leave it down in the description down below. I love getting that feedback on there. Or if you feel like um, it's a great game and you've seen someone else that needs to get it, please leave that down there and just reiterate this video out there for everyone uh, to check it out. Uh, but as always, I hope you all have a fantastic day and we'll see you on the next episode of Lemur's Corner.